everyone. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we are, God willing, on the last chapter of this beautiful mimer of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe that he said in Tufshin Beit, which is 1942. And it's talking about uh, the giving of the Torah. And the Rebbe asked the question in the beginning of the Mamar, what really was accomplished by giving the Torah? Abraham had the whole Torah before it was given. And he knew how to serve God. <clears throat> so why there have to be such a, a, a monumental thing as giving the Torah to the point where it says it was something brand new that had never been before. Bechodesh HaShlishi it was the Chidush HaShlishi. It was the third novelty, unusual thing that had never happened before in the world. The third thing. What was the first? That the Jews left Egypt. That God revealed himself, took them out of Egypt. The second one was that God revealed himself, took, split the sea and took the Jews over the sea. Third was that God revealed himself, and this was even greater. God revealed himself at Mount Sinai, gave the Torah. Something brand new, never had been before in the history of the world. God revealed himself. This is a very interesting thing about Judaism. Uh, you, is that Judaism is based on the, the belief, and in fact, the, 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 and the fact that God not only creates the world, that's the fourth of the Ten Commandments, that God created the world in the six days, Seventh day rest. God not only creates the world, and God only, not only He chose the Jewish people, Abraham, but God actually took the Jews out of Egypt. Millions and millions of people, three million Jews, took them all out of Egypt where a slave never had escaped. God Himself. And the Egyptians didn't believe it to the very end. They said it's not God, it's just nature, it's something else. And even if it is, it's only the God of the Jews. It has nothing to do with the creation. It can't be special. And to the point where they even chased the Jews into the sea after they saw the ten plagues and everything. But then when the Torah was given, there were no doubts whatsoever. And everybody said, right, wrong. As soon as Moses was gone, they thought that Moses was gone. and went up on Mount Sinai for 40 days. And they thought it was 41. And it wasn't coming back. So they all worshipped the golden calf. All they participated, either passively or actively. <laughs> So the Babish Rebbe asked the question, what exactly happened? Excuse me. <clears throat> what was the point of giving the Torah? First of all, Abraham already had the Torah. And second of all, and this is not the Rebbe, that's the first question. Abraham already had the whole Torah before and he, was, he knew how to serve God. And second, and this is the question I'm asking, didn't seem to do much good. I mean, after <clears throat> they got the Torah, so they, they worshipped the golden calf. As soon as Moses wasn't there, they all went <clears throat> to one degree or another. They all worshipped the golden calf. Exactly what they heard God say not to do. They all did. So what was the purpose of giving the Torah? And the point that it's called a new thing, a big novelty. And here we see Judaism is based that God himself revealed to all the Jewish people, no, there's no other religion that even has anything close to that. All the other religions are like, you know, cartoons or something like that compared to a real world. <clears throat> and nevertheless, we see that the other religions are doing okay. They're succeeding. And Judaism is just sort of schlepping along for the last couple thousand years and everybody hates us. So, but we got the Torah. What is the Torah exactly? What happened with the Torah? So now the Rebbe then explained in the last four paragraphs <clears throat> exactly what was the service of Abraham. And this is a service worth <clears throat> uh, copying. We should try to emulate Abraham as much as possible because Abraham just revealed the truth. There's God. God is creating us. God is infinitely close to us. There's no other real existence except for God. God creates everything. But God, on the other hand, is not limited to being inside of his existence. God is totally, he's the creator. And God is not limited to being Outside either, he in, is involved in every single detail. It's called Hashkacha Pratit. And that God cares about every detail and he reacts to everything that we do. It's very important to God. God is not limited to being out of everything, infinite. Like some philosophers say. 
God cares about every single detail in the world. And Abraham realized that. It's called Hashkacha Pratit. And Abraham realized that and he served God his whole life. And he did all this without the Torah. He didn't, the Torah was not, this was, this was 400 years before the Torah was given. Abraham did this. So if Abraham knew at all, and he passed it on to Isaac and Jacob, and says, so what did there have to be this big fanfare of giving the Torah God had to reveal himself, and he revealed himself to all the Jews? And what, what was the point? Okay, so now we're right, we're finishing up the service of Abraham. It says that Abraham built two altars <clears throat> to the different levels of godliness that he served. First of all, he was aware of what's called the God that appeared to him. The God that creates the world. And then after that, he became aware of God, <coughs> which is infathomable, just the essence of God himself. So let's do the last couple of lines in the previous paragraph. See, where we are, we're on the end of Dalit. The end of, that's right, Hazel. See, and, and if I could point, I would like to point. The first word on the line is a love. See, a love, three lines from the bottom. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, from the period. That's what it means. This is what it means that Abraham built an altar to God that appeared to him. And the Rebbe in the previous three paragraphs explained us how to do this. How we also can see God. I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you the story now. Did I ever tell you the story? Well, I'm I'm supposed to tell the story afterwards to the kids, but that's all right. I'll tell one story. I'll tell another story afterwards. Ready? Beautiful story about the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Tell me if I told you this story before, because I certainly have told it before. I don't know if I told it to you. In the year 1920, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe's father passed away. This was in Russia, of course. There had been the Russian Revolution, and the Communist Party won, and they were just starting to consolidate their their energy, their powers. <clears throat> and I don't know, I guess maybe it was still in the time of Lenin or something. I don't remember when Lenin died, but okay. In any case, there was just starting to consolidate their powers. The it was previous, in the time of Lenin. What, what? It was in the time of Lenin. It wasn't the time of Lenin, right. So <clears throat> the, the, the previous Rebbe, he was saying Kaddish for his father. And after he had finished the prayers, as there came in three plain clothes, whatever, secret service men, you know, whatever is KGB or whatever it was called back then, GPO or something, NKV Day. So they, they came in and they said that we, they want to take him in and ask, they want to take him into their offices and ask him some questions. They said he's not under arrest. Not, they're not arresting him. They just would like to talk to him. So he said, all right, wait for me until I finish praying. He waited for him. And they took him down to the office. He came and said he came into a room that was sitting in the room. There were men sitting in the room. All of them had guns on the table in front of them. And each one had his own personal gun. And he sat down and they said, we would like to ask you some questions about Judaism. So the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe spoke to them, but he answered in Yiddish. So they said to him, what are you talking the strange language for? They said, this is the language Yiddish. And Yiddish is a language, it's a Jewish language. To Jews, I say, I speak in Judaism. So these people said, what are you talking about? How do you know we're Jewish? The, the fact is they were Jewish. How do you know we're Jewish? So he said, um, well, my, <clears throat> my, my great-grandfather, he could tell a Jew from the back. He could tell, look at a person in the back, tell if he was a Jew. And my, my father or whatever, my grandfather, he could look at a Jew's nose and tell if he was a Jew. He used to say that when they make a bris milah, a circumcision, is they put the, the uh, foreskin, they remove it, they put it on his nose. So you can see a Jew, a Jew from his nose. So I haven't got those abilities, but I can guess, I guess that you're Jews. To Jews, you speak Judaism. And he, what they were, in fact. And he spoke only Yiddish. So they said, okay, we want to just ask you a question. You have this religion, you believe in, in Judaism. Now, a lot of these people had come from religious families, these, these Jews. I mean, religion was not, <clears throat> was not that uh, far away from the Russians, even though that had been before them, there were the Bundists and there were the, 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 the intellectuals. And this. Jews had been leaving Judaism already for two generations. But these people, 
They asked the Rebbe, you, your, your religion that you believe, do you believe that God exists or do you know that God exists? Is this, is this just faith that God exists or is it fact that God exists? So he said, it's fact. I know that God exists. So they looked at one another and they said, uh, oh, it's, really, it's fact, you know it. If so, can you prove it to us? So he said, yes, of course I can. So they said, okay, prove it. So he said, well, I'm, 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 I'm very surprised at you. He says, uh, <clears throat> why? He said, well, listen, there happens to be a science that they're uh, opening it up more and more nowadays. It's called astronomy. Astronomy looks at the, at the stars and they, they do it by looking at, through telescopes. They're developing bigger and bigger telescopes. So if you want to see all the stars, you want to see, if you look up in the sky, you can't see really, you know, you see a few stars. You can't <coughs> if you really want to see all the stars, you have to see a telescope. A telescope, you have to have a telescope. And the telescope has to be in a special place. It has to be a clear night. And you have to have somebody explaining it to you. So they said, so what does this got to do with anything? So well, it's the same thing. You know, you want to know that God exists. So you have to have the, the, the proper tool to see it. The telescope, that's through the Torah. Then you have to have a clear night. Clear night means that you have to clear up yourself. You have to eat kosher food. You have to do the commandments. That'll clear everything up. And then you have to have someone to explain it to you what you see, and then I'll explain it to you. So they laughed and they said, well, I mean, you really expect us to, 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 that we're supposed to stop eating, we're supposed to eat kosher food and start doing the commandments before we know that there's God? That's ridiculous. So he said, um, I, I mean, I just thought, you look like intelligent people. I don't, there happens to be now a, a new science that's called uh, nutrition. Nutrition. And once people used to think that you eat food, it's like throwing wood into a fire, you know. Now they realize that in food there's vitamins and there's minerals, <clears throat> there's all sorts of nutrients and things in the food. He said, if a person said, I'm not going to eat until I understand all of the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients and whatever, the enzymes, whatever that goes inside of the food, that's in the food, when I understand it, then I'll eat. The person would die. It would, it would, it would take him so much time. First of all, you eat, and then you understand the same thing here. First, do the commandments, and then after that, you'll understand. So he said, Fidek already writes, I did not convince them, but I saw that I made a strong impression on them. Okay, what's the straw story? It's a nice story, but the point of the story is, it seems to me, that when the Rebbe said to them that he could prove to them that God exists, he could show them that God exists, that they would know that God exists. I don't think he was kidding around. He wasn't just, you know, saying it for, uh, how do you say, for, for the purpose of, of debate. He really meant it. He really meant it truly. In other words, <clears throat> that, that's, the, that's, that's the point of Hasidut. But like anything else, the, like he said to them, you know, first of all, you have to clean up your act. You have to do what you're supposed to. And then you'll see godliness. The same thing here. The Rebbe can't stuff it inside of us, godliness. Godliness is a thing that... A, shalom, Yom Tov. It's, it's a very deeply personal experience, the essence of life. In order to feel it, first of all, a person has to devote himself. He has to do things that he doesn't really understand because the whole idea is totally above understanding. We're talking about feeling the Creator. So that's the purpose of Hasidut. The purpose of Hasidut means that a person makes a deep a commitment, a personal commitment that he's going to give up certain things. He's not going to do what he wants to. Like, like these people, they like to eat whatever they want to. No, yeah, they wanted to do what they want. No, no, yeah. So it's the same with us. We have to learn a little bit more. We have to dive in a little bit more. We have to a little bit more. Give, give ourselves over. Then we'll be ready for the revelation of Mashiach. So let's go. Says the Rebbe, Bezeo, that's what it means that Abraham, that's what Abraham did. Abraham built a false of an altar. He built an altar to the God that appeared to him. Namely, this is a Makar Om, this is the Yud Kei Vav Kei, which is the source of the revealed world. Al Yadei Avod and by means of this service that Avram did, the Mesirut Nefesh, that he had what's called Mesirut Nefesh, self-sacrifice. Now, self-sacrifice is against human nature. People do things for themselves. Everybody, they, also we do. I don't do, I don't. I do for myself. What's the purpose of Hasidut? That we'll learn for ourselves, we'll increase our intelligence will increase our awareness. Like it says, we'll increase our connection to God. But we do it for our, our soul, right? Our souls, we, we don't emphasize our body. We emphasize our soul. We put our soul. 
And here, Abraham, he did, he gave away his soul, Masirut Nefesh. <clears throat> By means of this thing of Masirut Nefesh, that Abraham did not care about himself at all. All he wanted to do was just what God wanted, as he rose above, he rose above even his own intelligence, his own awareness. Allah, Ladar Yona, he went to a higher level. Abraham. <clears throat> Of connection to God, and he built an altar to God. Stam, and there's no no explanation, no description. And because of this level of devotion that he had to this Hashem Stam, what happens when a person feels God? He feels more responsibility to the world. He feels more responsible to the world. It's nothing. Just says I attach to God. I'm going to take off all my clothes, run through the streets. Right? I don't care what anybody thinks about me and scream, you know, Hashem Shema Yisrael. No, okay, it's, a, it's an idea. It's an idea. It certainly is a, you know, a sign of devotion that you don't care about yourself. Or anything, but that's not what God wants. You have to do things the way God wants. <clears throat> How do you say you have to be crazy for God on the Rebbe's terms, not on your terms? But Avram, then he rose up to this higher level. <clears throat> I've got a higher level of responsibility. Let's just finish this paragraph and ask questions. Shahu, Shem Avaya, this is the name of the Shama Allah This is the upper name of God. And he went, says he went higher, higher levels of love. He traveled to love. We said the south means love. Higher levels of love. To, to uh, connect with his own. Uh, essence, namely chesed, shiruta the almadelian, like we said before, that's the beginning in the service of the upper worlds. Until he was a, a vehicle for godliness, mamash, vehicle for godliness, mamash. Right, like now, right now, everybody's looking at at a at a screen. The screen is good; it's working. If you don't see the screen, you don't see. You see what's on the screen. As soon as you start seeing the screen, you got problems. You have static, you have this doesn't work, there's dots, there's whatever. Then this, you see the screen, not good. Same thing with Abraham. <clears throat> Abraham reached to this tremendously high level. He just did what was right. Always did what, exactly what was right. Didn't think about himself at all. No, that's the, that's the goal. To reach to this level of godliness that's totally above any comprehension. That's pure life. Pure love. Of the Creator, then we're really all our potential. The reason we're created comes out. Hey, I'm not bad. Not everybody can reach this level. That's how the Tanya starts off, right? You should be at tzaddik, but you're not going to make it. You're, you're swearing, sworn in. You have to be at tzaddik. Everybody can be at tzaddik. It's possible that you're, you're, you're sworn in to be at tzaddik. But he says, but you're not, even if everybody tells you you made it, look at yourself like you're you're not. This is not everybody. This is the ideal level. In the time of Mashiach, everyone will reach this level of awareness of the truth and how amazing, what miracles we are. That God is creating us all the time. But we can't realize this now. Not everybody can get to this Madrid. So what are we supposed to do? Let's see. Hainu. And remember, Abraham got to this before the Torah was given, right? Hainu, the Emiot, that even though. I share call, Adam, that every person, he may behold, it is in his power. As in his ability, his potential. La vin haskala to understand ideas of God, baspar of tova, and to explain and understand it well, right? Like the previous Rebbe said to those <coughs> communists in the beginning, yes, I can make you realize that God exists. I can show you proof. The call prati and yani, dover vadaver, even though that every Jew has the ability <coughs> to understand God and to understand all the details about God. I'll open over to Tom, and in a good way to understand, right, every detail in the world, to appreciate everything that's in the world, to add on, to be positive in the world, to have more love and of God, the more, like it says, tzaddik is love and fear and faith. Lead bonen, every person, every Jew, including me and you, lead bonen bo, to, we can contemplate and think deeply, ba'makot adat, Lefi Arko, according to his ability, Ad and share and tell, Yit or rare Lavavo, that every person will arouse, be aroused in his heart. Be'emet Lamito, in ultimate truth, Libatel, a love Yitbrech, 
to be totally surrendered to Hashem is brich. And like what I said before, what is surrender? People usually think surrender, the worst thing in the world to surrender. Who am I going to surrender? You surrender, hands up, don't move, right? That's the surrender. No. Surrender to Hashem is exactly the opposite. <clears throat> surrender to Hashem means start moving. Do what you're supposed to, what I put you in the world for. That's to surrender to Hashem. To be to, like Abraham, we see, like King David. It says King David didn't even sleep. Moshe says he was constantly, that's, that's being surrendered to Hashem. Nevertheless, every person has the potential, but not everyone can reach the slope. This is what it says, Matmia. This is what is, is surprised, is very, how do you say, shocked. Hanavi, the prophet, so when he said, I am God, I never changed. The Atem Bene Israel and Bene Yaakov and you, Jewish people, Lo Chalitem, have not been destroyed. It seems that what's he what's what's he talking about? I am God, don't worry about it, I'll never change. I love you, and therefore, you Jewish people, you will never be destroyed, says the Rebbe. That's one explanation, but there's a deeper explanation. What does it mean? The Be'em at Midbonin Ba'makadada that a person can really a <coughs> Jew. He can really think deeply in his mind to understand that every Jew has the ability to think deeply and to realize that there is God and God never changes. God is the source of all being, the source of all life, the source of all good. God is it creates all being constantly. All being comes from Him. God never changes. God creates all change. If so, when a person understands how amazing and wonderful and good God is, it should bring that a person, how do you say, he destroys his old self. He, <coughs> he devotes himself totally to God. That's called kalisim. Kalisim means to be destroyed, but it also means kalas and nefesh, to be, how do you say, a, a, a tremendous, uh, what do you call it? Devotion, unity, <clears throat> to give yourself away. A person, that's what he says, Ani Hashem lo I am God, I never changed. Ba'atem b'nei Yaakov lo And you, Jewish people, you're not excited about that? Your soul's not going out of your bodies for this? Shalot takpoz v'shum davar, rak bo. It should be that when you realize this, that all you want is just to be included in God, to just do what God wants and say what God wants, think what God wants and feel and have love of God. And that's what the prophet is saying. I am God. God is amazed. I am God. I never change. And you Jewish people, you're not excited about this? No, Kalisa. Not excited. And even when you understand that you're not excited about it. That's what the prophet <coughs> is saying that God is very surprised by what? Why is it you Jewish people? Why is it? That you Jewish people are not excited, that your souls are not just going out of your body. You're so tremendously excited, like you get excited about who knows money or whatever. <clears throat> why is it? I know. I'll tell you why Jewish people they can't even understand. We're talking about the Hasidim. Who did the Rebbe write this for? The other guy, the non-religious Jews. Right? He wrote it to us, Chabad Hasidim. Why is it that we read this and we understand God a little bit and we don't get excited? I know, I'll tell you why, says the Rebbe, because my, my power has tripped up because of my sins. Kashal means to trip up. Ba'avoni, because of my sins, kochi, my power. Perish. The oto akoach va'oz. This power and this, how do you say, defiance. Le sagef at the Yitzhar Hora. To deny <coughs> and to how do you say to, to go against the Yetzir Horror, the power of selfishness, self destructive impulse that everybody has? That we should say no to physical pleasures. What are we talking about, physical pleasures? <coughs> the pleasure of success. Well, not necessarily bad things. Pleasure of success, the pleasure of being popular. The pleasure of taking it easy. There shouldn't be any problems. How do you say comfort zone? 
that power that we have to defy this, to serve God, and to force our natural soul, the natural soul here means the intellectual soul, to understand, <coughs> to think about godliness, that we have this ability to go to love God, it's inside of us. Where is it? Why isn't it turned on? Why, does it, why don't we activate it? This ability, which is in each and every Jew, to defy the whole world, to defy all egotism, to defy the falseness of the world, and the false pleasures of the world, the false pleasures of our own selfishness, <coughs> that I want, we get angry with this. We we'll defy that. We can go against it. Why don't we turn this power on? Thus is their co-op from Yeder Yidin. This is in the power of every Jew. In a kochoze, this power kashal, it's tripped up, it's stumbling, ba'avoni, because of our sins, because of our mistakes. Shu nechlash al yadeavonot, that this ability that we have to change the world, to change ourselves, to improve everything, this gets weakened by means of our <coughs> sins. She'ain bakocho, that because of this you haven't got the power, the saget at the Yetzirah, to make your Yetzirah suffer a little bit. V'latzor, and to stop ba'ado, shalo yimshach achrei davarim gashvim, not to go after physical things. Ve'ain bakocho la'achriach at nefesh ativit, is not in his power to force the natural soul, intellectual soul, la'orer bo ratzon la'havi nasag elokis, to understand things about godliness. I heard a story about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, that there was one period of his life when he was in America in the beginning, before the, in the time of the previous Rebbe, that the, pre, that the Rebbe, Shlita used to smoke. He used to smoke. And I understand he used to smoke fairly heavily. <coughs> and the previous Rebbe <coughs> said something about that it's not a good thing to smoke. And the Rebbe <clears throat> this is the way I heard the story. The Rebbe put his hand over his forehead, moved his hand over his forehead, <clears> or <throat> something. Anyway, he stopped. That's it, he stopped. The previous Rebbe says he doesn't want it, he stopped. <clears throat> okay, what does this mean? You know how hard it is to stop smoking. There's people that are addicted to all sorts of crazy things. <clears throat> but one of the main reasons that people are addicted to things is because they can't summon up the power inside of themselves to stop. They can't summon up the power. So therefore, they have to be all sorts of tricks that different people use. There's the 12-step program and things like that. Which they, they, there's success in those things. But simply, it could, should be that a person says, hey, if this is bad, I'm not doing it anymore. Right? Very simple. The problem is, is you suffer. Right? A person is addicted to, to whatever it is, to Facebook or what it is. You can't do without it. Television. Oh, I remember when I was young, television used to be, I couldn't do, couldn't live without television. Right? There was one channel, whatever it is, ABC or something like that, and it had like one program on it, which was a Popeye cartoon, and, and we used to fight over it, right? But you had to have television. I, I, tell, I, I can't live without television. Why, 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 do you, why can't you live without television? So there's two reasons. First of all, you don't understand that it's bad. And even when you do understand that it's bad, all of a sudden you say, okay, so it's bad, so what? You know, I, I, I like it. I, I can't do it anymore. I, I feel... Because all these things, when a person stops, he feels bad. It makes you feel uncomfortable. You had something you were doing, and then you were in a comfort zone, so it makes you feel bad. So what are you supposed to do? So suffer a little bit. So you suffer a little bit. Move, remove your mind. Think about something else. He says, but we, we don't do it. We don't do it. It's hard. He says, it's hard for that. It's even harder to remove your mind from not serving God. It's so easy just to take it easy. Right? Being aware of God means you have responsibility. Responsibility means you can't sit around and do You can't be lazy. You can't, you're not the boss. People don't like that, even though they know it's the truth, but it's, it's difficult. So sometimes you have to force yourself to learn more, and you have to force yourself. I mean, I'm talking to myself as well as to you. Probably you guessed that. <clears throat> it says, nefesh Therefore, so th we have this power, this ability inside of ourselves to defy the world. That's the guy. That's what it means. That my because of my sins, I have tripped up my ability to serve God and to to the defy my lower 
desires, it's all tripped up, it's all weakened. Why? Because of my sins. Says the Rebbe, this idea of sins, in a Kovanya in Averos, doesn't mean really doing sins. Ki'im inyani, evos, the word for sins also means crookedness. The ikum, tarachim akumim, far krimta vegan, crooked ways. Kamosha on a roim, like we can see clearly, betive b'nei adam, how people are. But sometimes you can have a person that's a, 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 a Rosh Hashiva, a rabbi, whatever it is, and he's, he's he, 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 let, let's let him see. She yesh bali mishor, that there are people, mentioned was in aule zayne in yanim, gein ze bederich mishor. There are people that are straight. Everything they do, straight. This is what you're supposed to do. I'm not lying, I'm not cheating. My word is a word. The Yeshem Bali Eko. And there's people that everything they do has to be a little bit crooked. Right? They can mention was in all the Zainanim, Gainze Baderikiku. People that no matter what they do, it has to be, they have to trick somebody. They can't, their word is not a word. Krumavek. The call kahim mutim. And so much a person can fool himself. I share gam im mar in lem at the derech. That even if you show these people what the proper way to live, and you explain to them what's wrong, they, they won't agree. They go in a way that's crooked. There's this, a saying that they say that when the Rebbe gives people answers, some people, they write to the Rebbe, the Rebbe gives them an answer, and that's it, they do it. Other people, they, write, they can do anything except for that. What the Rebbe tells them to do, Eh, tomorrow we'll see, maybe, all right, I'll ask, another, I'll look, I'll ask somebody else, I'll look around. Other, the most difficult thing. <clears throat> the Cain, who also, Ba'avod Elokis, and also is in the service of Hashem, Sheyeshnum Bali Misha, there are people that are straight. Shehochim B'derecha Yasha, they go straight, but B'derecha Voda, Sheyeshnum Bali Evos, there's people that are crooked. What does it mean crooked? They fool themselves. That everything they do, they can't go straight. Now the previous Rebbe knows what he's talking about, right? He's, he's been through everything already. He's been through all of the, 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 how do you say, the chambers of hell. He was in Russia and he was in, in, in the, with, with the Nazis, with the communists. <clears throat> well, but they came to America, there was the reform, there was the this, there were the misnagdim, people that were against him, people that hated him for absolutely no reason. These people can also have all sorts of philosophies, and they're popular. They can change Torah of the Mitzvah, according to the place, right? People came to America, especially in the early, when, when the Rebbe arrived there in the 40s, right? The, the, the Reform conservative. There were even big Reform rabbis. The, 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 you can look it up. The, 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 they advised Roosevelt not to take in the, 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 the religious Jews from from Shaina uh, uh, they changed the Torah, they changed it around. A call no matter what you explain to them, how crooked it's not going. explaining what really you should serve Hashem. It doesn't help at all. I mean, this is not a politics class, but the 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 the, 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 the True Judaism is that you have to love God, you have to love the Torah, you have to love Hashem. Love, love the Torah, I'm sorry, love the Torah, love every Jew, and love God. Three loves. That's it. A Jew has to love the Torah means that he's only devoted to the Torah. Loving God means he has to love only God. Love every Jew means you have to love every Jew no matter what. But it has to be, all, everything has to be according to the Torah. It can't be that a person can say, you know, I'll do a little sin, because a little sin, <clears throat> says the Rebbe, it doesn't work that way. <clears throat> to go, I do you say, to go according to the spirit of the times. And we, we, if we see it outside, it must be that we do the same thing. And by means of this, that we're not going straight. They cannot seem to bring a change in themselves, even though they realize that I am God. I never change. They realize that God is infinite, and God is infinitely close to us. And God loves us. And they feel the oneness of God. 
it doesn't bring the kalapachos is a chuka. Maybe they should have at least a little bit of a desire to cling to Hashem. <clears throat> That's what it means. I am God. I will never change. <clears throat> you, Bnei Yaakov, lo chalisa. Let's just take a simple example. We can extrapolate it to now, because I was in the first temple. The Jewish people were in Eretz Israel. They had the temple. They had just received the Torah a few hundred years earlier, right? They received the Torah what five hundred whatever years earlier before. <clears throat> Everybody was religious. Everybody was, and nevertheless, what did they do? They worshipped idols. It says that the first temple was destroyed because of, of Gile Arai, Shvichas Damim, and of Odes. I mean, those things are really, really bad. I mean, they, they didn't know what was wrong. They didn't know these things were wrong. It says, yeah, they knew what was wrong. They knew what was wrong. But it says that there was such a Yetzer horror for idolatry to doing these things that people couldn't stop themselves. What do you mean they could? So if they couldn't stop themselves, so they couldn't. There was, I mean, who made the world that way? God made it. So they couldn't stop themselves. So why were they guilty? Why destroy the basement? They couldn't stop themselves, right? He says, no, no, that's not the Peshat. The Peshat is, is they were aware of God, and they were aware of the Torah, and they were aware of the Jewish people, and they were aware of this. But they also had human desires. And the reason that people have human desires, Hashem puts them there so that we will defy them. And that raises a person up. But they didn't want to. They didn't want to do it. They knew everything. They knew, but they didn't want to change. And if that's the way it is by them, and they didn't realize that they were wrong, there was prophets that came, they didn't listen to the prophets. They didn't listen to Yeshaya, and they didn't listen to Yirmiyahu, and they didn't listen to Cheskel. They didn't listen to the prophets. Didn't listen. They came and they told them. Now those people, that they were so high, and they were so holy, and they were so great, they did. So what about us? What a, <clears throat> whatever's going to get to this. Shaitan v'siv is a dabra. The reason is that we know what we're supposed to do. We don't do it or we don't believe in ourselves. And who am I? Masha is born of the reason that he's born of the thinking about God. The Ani Hashem lo shiniti, that I am God, I never change. Enu pola doesn't bring arousal of the heart is because Atam ben Yaakov, because you are the sons of Jacob. Atam ben Yaakov. What is your, because you're Jacob. So what were Jacob? It says Jacob is Yud Akiv. Neshamot the ikva to the Mashiach. We're the souls of the heels of the Mashiach. What do you want from us, Hashem? What do you want? We're the lowest souls that have ever been. The Rebbe is talking about his generation. Just like in the body of a person, the skin, which is on the heel of your foot, who or it's thick. And it is insensitive, Beoter, and it does not feel very much. Like the hand and the feet. We walk around all the time with shoes, but there's a lot of people that walk around without any shoes on. There's not, they, they walk around without any shoes. Their feet are insensitive. I have a grandson that as soon as he, he was able to remove his shoes, he removed the shoes. They live up in Miron. He walks around the streets with no shoes. How he does it, I have no idea. But heels, feet are things that can be very insensitive. <clears throat> really, the fact of the matter is, though, that your heel is alive. Right? Ask any, what is it? Uh, reflexolo- reflexological, whatever. the feet, every part of the foot is it good. We're very low, but it's part of the. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the heel of a person's foot. <clears throat> It lives from, it's, it's being a li- enlivened from the soul. Kamochom or a live, just like the heart. It's part of you, just like the brain. Rakhom or a live, it's just that the, the, the meat that the heart is made from and the stuff that the brain matter is made from. Hu chomer zach, it's very refined. The dak, the oter. Chomer ekev, and the substance that the heels are made of is very thick and insensitive. The Cain, who also Baruchni, so it is also this generation. We are the heels of all of the generations of the Jewish people. We're the heels. <clears throat> so it is these souls, the soul of the Neshamos, of souls. The Neshamos, the souls of the Ikva, the Mashiach, the souls of the heels of the Mashiach, Tzorichot, they require, it orod yoter, they're very insensitive to godliness, and they have to have a tremendous arousal we're going to talk about the Torah, mountain, 
giving of the Torah. Here we go. Why the Torah was given. Ad, she'er gishu at the emet, our souls, we have to have a lot of work in order that they should feel the truth, the heels. Behainu, the call and the shamans, that all the souls, kalulus, the adamarishon, that all the souls that were ever created existed, first of all, in a, what do you call it, a seed form in Adam. Adam was the first man he can tend inside of him all of the souls that are going to come afterwards. Yesh to Baroj, there are some souls that come from the head. Bishari Baron, there's books, Kabbalistic books that talk about Gilgulim, reincarnations, which part of the soul of the body of Abraham, the soul of Abraham, did each one, each person come from? Right? Where, where did the Moshe came from? It was the brains and other people. O Bishari Borim, Yesh, the Yesh Bishi Chalos Ba'ekim. There are some souls that come from the eyes of Abraham, some come from the ears. There's some that come from the heels. Who are these souls that come from the heels? That's pretty bad. That's us. The majority of the Jews in our generation. There, from this, there can be crookedness of the heel. There are people that can be crooked. Why? Because the source of his soul comes from this level of the heel. There is no awareness of godliness, no sensitivity. I mean, the, the heel of a person is not that much difference from the heel of an ape, from a, a dog, whatever. A heel, you know, it's, it's shaped differently, but it's on the ground all the time. Lochim, therefore, Yochaliot, there could be our souls, therefore, were the heels. Therefore, there can be a crookedness, <clears throat> an ikum, a not straight, gambadarke avoda, the way we serve God. So even we, like heels, even you become religious, you do Torah and mitzvahs, but still, you know, with, without awareness of Hashem, there's 99.9999999% we're sure without any doubt that we exist. We feel it 100%. There's one little point zero 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 one that says maybe God exists. Could be. Okay? Now leave me alone. It does, that's, that's our souls. And we're talking about religious people. We're talking about us. We're talking about me. From this, there can be tripping up. From this, we <clears throat> this weakens our ability to defy our yetsur hora and our nefesh ativit, our evil impulse and our natural impulses. The power to de- de- defy it. But really, but really, these low souls of our generations, we just explained how bad they are. There's a big advantage to them. In our souls of our generation, we have this one ability that Abraham had that brought him to the highest levels, which is called self-sacrifice. It's just like physical. The place where a person stands the hilicha, or where he walks, the gova, upright, after <coughs> gova, he wants to raise up higher and higher. He wants to go up in, in his feet. People, people don't have any feet; they can't go upstairs. Zel yitro on a regal. This is the advantage of the foot on the head. Namely, what? That's our generation. We're the feet. We elevate all the heads. All the previous generations, they were geniuses. They were amazing. They were holy. There was the tanaim. They could raise the dead. They were. Ah, Amazing people. <coughs> but what? They were egotists. And they had what to be egotistical about. The thing about us is that we don't really have that much to be egotistical about it. Even though we are egotists, but still the fact is we don't really have that much to be egotistical about, especially if we compare ourselves to the previous generations. <coughs> but a person could say, okay, that's what I got. So, no, you have something else. You are a Jew. Because you're a Jew, you have this power of self-sacrifice. That's your Judaism. Not your intellect, not your emotions. Where is your Judaism? You feel you're Jew? Yes. What's your Jew? Self-sacrifice. That's the essence of Judaism. It's the essence of your Judaism. It's the essence of the previous generations. It's the essence of the generations of the Tanaim, of the prophets, of the elders, of this. The Moshe Rabbeinu. The essence of a Jew is this Mesirut Nefesh. Our generation, the water has gone down. All the good qualities have gone down, 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 down. down. What's left? The basis, <clears throat> the feet, they lift up the head. So it is in spiritual service of God. 
the yesh yitron ben neshamos, that we have an advantage of our souls on the ich the Mashiach, the heels of the Mashiach, that we have the ability of self-sacrifice. That we can jump out of ourselves. That was the thing we learned about Pesach. Pesach Sheni, today, jump out of ourselves. We can jump out and say, hey, that's it. I'm learning, I'm davening, I'm, I'm doing what I can. I'm going to give charity. I'm going to be a different person. I'm going to go out and do mitzvah. I'm going to think about Mashiach. I'm going to talk about Mashiach. For one second, it can jump from one end to the other. We can go against all of our <clears throat> egotistical, whatever it is, fantasies. And that's what we got in Matan Torah. <clears throat> this is what we got. That's why God gave us the Torah. True, there was Abraham knew the whole Torah. But when God himself appeared at Mount Sinai, something happened that is only being revealed now. The tzaddikim that were before Matan Torah, he nay, except for Abram Avinu, loyal him, Mesirut Nefesh. Only Abraham had this thing of self-sacrifice. That's what was lacking in the first temple, what was lacking in the second temple. But in the giving of the Torah, Nita Nakoach was given the ability, the call Yisrael, the power for every generation. And it's only being revealed here now. <clears throat> Even to these souls of the heels of the Mashiach, from every Jew has Mesut Nefesh for Torah of Mitzvah. There can be self-sacrifice for Torah of a mitzvah. We can put ourselves to a side, our, what do we call it? Our, our selfish selves to a side, the self that we created, and start realizing the self that Hashem created. And these souls, because we will realize the power that was given in Mount, Mount and Torah, the previous generations, they didn't utilize it. They didn't realize it. We will realize this power that was given at Mount and Torah, Mount Sinai, and only at Mount Sinai. The Kabul Pene Mashiach to accept the face of Mashiach, Tzidkenu Bekorov, right now. So, the answer to the question, what was the advantage of giving the Torah? Ari Abraham had the whole Torah before it was given. So, the answer is yes, Abraham did, but nobody else did. Nobody else did. Abraham had the essence of Judaism, which is self-sacrifice self-sacrifice self-devotion what do you want to call it? self true self-activation giving yourself totally in tune with hashem uh, becoming dynamic for hashem that's what abraham got and that's what all of us got at mount sinai and this is the generation that is going to be revealed to everyone okay good good great great I, i'm tempted